In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for His infinite love, mercy, and kindness, allowing us to be in His holy presence, in His holy church, sharing His word, which is the truth and the life-giving word, the good news, the Holy Bible, in its, in, in its entirety, both Old and New Testament together. We pray, those who are with us in this Holy Church and those who are watching us through live streaming, that you're always in good health and in good spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 119, verses 17 to 32, inclusive. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may see one wondrous things from your law. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul breaks with longing for your judgments at all times. You rebuke the proud, the cursed, who stray from your commandments. Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept your testimonies. Princes also sit and speak against me, but your servant meditates on our, on our statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, always, my beloveds. How are we? Good. How are we? Good. How are we? Good. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure? This is the Middle Eastern way. Are you sure? <laughs> the Iraqi way. Are you sure? Mm. We thank the Lord. So what do we do? Oh, yes, we're uh, doing the Bible preach. Correct. Mm. I'm getting old. Uh, before we do that, uh, let us listen to this uh, beautiful hymn. And um, is it our beloved Eddie? Yes? Are you ready, my dear Eddie? Yes. Let's go. Let's listen to this hymn, and then we'll come. We're not listening to this hymn, are we? Well done, my dear. Put your hands together for Eddie. That was the best hymn I have ever heard throughout my life's journey in the, spiritual, in the spiritual field. There you go. We'll try once again. You know, we're all humans. Mistakes do happen every now and then. We pray the Lord helps us not to make those mistakes. I will wait for you later on, Eddie, and I'll fix you outside with my red belt karate. All right. Here is Eddie. Amen to that. I surrender. Okay, we are continuing our um, journey in the book of Revelation, and by the grace of our Lord Jesus, we are coming to the conclusion of chapter 18 this evening. So we'll be reading from Revelation chapter 18 and verses 22 to 24 inclusive, which is the end of the chapter. 
And this is what the word of the Lord says to all of us. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore, nor craftsmen of any craft shall be found in you anymore, and the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore, and the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorcery all the nations were deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints, and of all who were slain on the earth. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. All right. So last week, just to recap, we said that chapter 18 is the judgment upon this woman, the great city Babylon, which is the United Nations of our times. The United Nations of our time. And behind the United Nations is the United States of America. And we said that this wrath of God this wrath is actually coming from God Himself as a punishment upon the UN, which is the US. So this woman is the United States of America slash UN. And we said America is a feminine name for Amerigo as far as the Latin language is concerned. So it's the Latinized format of the feminine name because Amerigo, he was Vespucci, Amerigo apparently was the founder of the United States and they named America after Amerigo. So the word, the, the masculine name is Amerigo, the feminine name is America in the Latin language. That's why the book of Revelation is referring to the United States as the woman, female. So, United States is the United Nations. And we said chapter 18 in its entirety is the punishment of Jesus Christ of Nazareth upon this woman, the UN, i.e. US. So, the United States will fall in the future. Will fall. It's not a matter of if it falls, no. It's a matter of when it will fall, but it will. Now, last week we spoke about that, um, the millstone, the millstone which this mighty angel took it and he threw it down into the sea and this woman was found no more. And we said this millstone is taken from the land, from the mountain, and it was cast into the sea. So from the land into the sea, so this could indicate a natural disaster that will strike the United States. It may not necessarily be a biological warfare or even a military attack. It's more so a natural disaster, maybe an earthquake or something at a huge scale, a, a, a magnificent, magnificent scale where this country will not remain the superpower because the economy will be crashed to absolute zero. America will remain, but no longer the superpower. Just like so many empires, Egyptians, the Egyptians remain, but no longer an empire. The Greeks remain, no longer empire. The Assyrians remain, no longer empire. The same way America will go but it will remain, but no longer a superpower of the 21st century. Now, we'll continue our topic, and this is verses 22 to 24. Now, it's saying, after that mighty angel cast that millstone into the, into the sea and it sunk straight away, this is the way, and, and he says, in an hour. That means, an hour means sudden, sudden strike that will bring America to its knees. It'll be so quick, so sudden, they won't even have the time to, recover, uh, to prepare for it. They won't have the time. It will come like a thief. It will come like a thief. Because when the Lord, 
when the Lord wants to punish, <laughs> you're not going to be ready for the Lord. The only time we're ready when He comes with His mercy, with His grace, and gives us so many signs because He is not coming to punish. When He's coming with mercy, He's coming to deliver, to save, to redeem. That's why He will give you so many signs to alert you to them, to get you ready and prepared for His coming. But when He's coming to avenge those who have gone against Him, He's not going to give Him any signs. He's not coming with His mercy. He's coming with His wrath. And this is what's going to happen. And who can be ready and prepared for God's wrath? No one. God is the source of wisdom, the sovereign authority over all. He will come and strike before we even blink our eyes. So now, so it continues. This woman will be seen no more after this millstone get cast into the sea. And then verse 22, after America gets struck by the Lord Jesus, the sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore. Well, when he gets striked, no more music. Oh. Well, finally, we'll say goodbye to Hollywood. And with it, the Illuminatis. Because they have nestled in Hollywood. Nestled. Absolute evilness comes out of Hollywood. So my beloved sons and daughters, especially the younger generation, if you're listening to Hollywood music, stop. It's evil. If you think you have this singer as your idol, as your role model, you're mistaken, my son. You're mistaken, my daughter. Don't ever take any rap singer, any singer that comes, that is a product of Hollywood. Don't ever don't ever don't ever follow such evilness let me tell you if you're not aware the illuminatis are satan worshipers period yes like the freemason don't let anyone deceive you don't let anyone deceive you freemasonry is satanic worship illuminatis is satanic worship and they have infiltrated the church to the highest rank. That's why you see the church behaving in a very weird way and you're saying, what is going on? No, you need to wake up. Yes, it's happening because the church is infiltrated by Freemason, Satan worshippers people. And they have placed their own people in leadership roles in the church, dressed from outside like a lamb, but from inside they are vicious wolves destroying don't be surprised don't be shocked don't be shocked they're not there for the Lord Lord have mercy Lord honestly it's very sad very sad so my beloved Hollywood will finally be crushed by the Lord Jesus because Hollywood has been the reason to brainwash millions upon millions upon millions of younger generation and sentence them to darkness. Oh. Don't. Don't listen. Listen to a, a song that glorifies the Lord. Listen to a church hymn that praises the Lord. Stop listening to evil, evil songs. The drum beat is programmed deliberately to manipulate your subconscious mind. Some of you are very young here. You won't grasp, you won't even maybe believe what I'm saying. But this is a fact. This is a reality we need to face. So, you see some of these Hollywood celebrities, they go on the stage, the way it is set up, the movement on the stage, the way they dance, the way they move, the way they, the drum beats, it is satanic rituals. Please, I beg you, 
It will brainwash you no matter who you are and what you are. You cannot, you cannot control your mind the moment the subconscious mind is controlled. You cannot. When the subconscious mind is shaped, formed by the entertainment industry, you won't even know what hit you. You won't even realize you're going the wrong way. You will not. Because when the brain controls you, that's it, you're finished. You're finished. But I can assure you, no more harpists, no more flutists, no more trumpeters, no more musicians. See you later, alligator, Hollywood, you evil worshippers. What did they do to Mel Gibson? They gave him hell trying to stop him from putting the passion of the Christ in cinemas. Why? Because cinemas and the entertainment industry is controlled by Freemason. Wake up, honestly wake up. And what did they do to him about the sound of freedom? Child trafficking. Five years it was a battle to finally being released and shown in cinemas and other platforms. Five years of battle. Why? But look when it comes to LGBT, they will force from the highest to the lowest rank to do it and act upon it immediately. Big corporate worlds, they support LGBT. They have put that thing on their products. Why? Because they are all Freemason. And now the church. <laughs> oh, the church wants to embrace. No more. America, you need to fall. You've gone too far. You are challenging Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Who do you think you are? I'm talking to the governmental system of America, not the people. There are some wonderful, faithful, genuine Christians in America whom I love and respect and honor. But the system of America is evil. So the White House, the White House needs to be changed. Like it's painted white, but the deeds are black. The deeds are black. The color is white, but the actions are all black. Maybe we should repaint the White House. I've become a good painter. Right, any painters here? <laughs> all right. So no more. Because you're being striked. Hollywood will no longer be. No more music. No more entertainment. No more wa -a -wa -a -dov -dov. No more baby. And no more that evil movements and the way they dress up. The way they dress up. My girls, my girls, my girls, my daughters, the love of my life, my eyesight you are. I love you. You listen to these female singers hmm? and you make them your life. Please, I beg you, wake up. My sons, don't. What have you got in your room on the walls? You've got a singer's uh, portrait or something? Throw it in the bin. That's where it belongs. I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about the action and the deeds of that person. The action of that person deserves filth. In the bin. In the bin. In the bin. Don't. You want to have a role model? My son and daughter? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is your role model. This is the crown of glory. You need to make him your role model. You need to make him the crown of your glory. You need to make him your idol. Jesus. No one else. No one else, my beloved. And then it continues, says, No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore. No craftsmen of any craft shall be found in you anymore. Craftsmen here 
refers to all those people who have a very big head who are wise. They're craftsmen. America, why do you think became so successful and so advanced? Because America opened the window of opportunity to whoever has got a big massive brain. Anyone who is in the scientific field and very successful, America said, come, if you're being paid in your country a million dollars, we will pay you 10 million. Just come and work for us. In the military field, we'll pay you 10 times more over. In biology, in every field, they opened the window of opportunity and paid them much more than what they are paid in their own country. They gave them an offer they never were able to resist nor say no to it. They took all the brains. These are the craftsmen. So come and build us a weapon nobody has. Come and create a virus nobody has created as yet. <laughs> but definitely Anthony Fauci is not in that category of big brains. But you know what? America took offered, gave, opened the door, come, we'll give you permanent residency straight away on the spot. We'll give you a residence to live in. We'll give you this much money. Couldn't resist. They took all the skilled people. These are the craftsmen to create things for America to make it the superpower of all nations. No more craftsmen in America when it gets striked by the Lord Jesus so all that technology all those brains behind that technology will no longer exist gone gone and the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you anymore millstone crushes the grain of wheat food sustainability Millstone represents sustainability. When it gets striked, no more. They feed the, the fish in the ocean with the food they just throw in the ocean. They can feed all of Africa. The amount of food America throws into the ocean can feed all of Africa and no one needs to starve anymore. They won't give it to Africa. They will feed the fish. The country that fed the fish, a time is coming, will not be able to feed its own people. Will not. The millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. Food. Verse 22, number one, no more entertainment. Hollywood is gone. No more craftsmen. All people that are so skilled and highly skilled, no more gone with the wind. And the millstone, no more sustainability, no more, no more being able to sustain her own self, no more. Verse 23, the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. What does light represent? Light represents the day. When you're in the light, what do you do? You move. So what is light? Movement. What is movement? Work. So when it says here, because don't forget, the book of Revelation is a symbolic prophetic book. Right? So we need to undo it. We need to find the, the secret to this language. So when it says the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore, that means no more work, no more movement, no more trade with America. All the people who traded with America will no longer do because America will fall and it will be no longer needed by those nations. You see now, so many nations trade with America, not because they love America, no, they love themselves and their own success they want their economy to be strong america is the reason to strengthen their economy that's why everybody's trading with america when america falls no more light no more work no more trade 
no more connection with the rest of the world. Gone. No more. And the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore. You see, the light, why the light first and then the bride and the, the bridegroom and the bride? Because what is the bride and the bridegroom? Yeah, marriage, correct. But what happens in marriage? There is a bond. There is unity. There is a link together. So, you see, there is no light. There is no trade, no work. There is no more bond between America and the rest of the world. There is no more bond between America and so many other nations of the world. Because when America gets striked, that relationship, just like in the marriage where the two become one, and don't forget, what is the UN? <laughs> United. <laughs> United Nations over evilness. They're united, like the matrimonial bond. But this unity is outside of Jesus Christ. The only true unity is when Christ is the one who is bounding you together. If you are bounded outside of the Lord, there is no unity, there is no bond, everything is fake. Unless the Lord is in the equation, forget it. That is why so many relationships fall apart because they were never built on Christ. They were never founded on Christ. They were never bonded by Jesus Christ. They did it outside of the Lord. They loved each other outside of the Lord. They committed to each other outside of the Lord. They started strong. They ended up gone. Because the only relationship that lasts forever is when Christ is the foundation to that relationship. Period. The church walks away from the Lord, destroys, destroys itself. Family walks away from the Lord divides a person walks away from the Lord is lost is lost the current of the world will come and swipe just take you away from the Lord take you away from the Lord and when you walk away from the Lord there's only one thing darkness evilness death total destruction so the light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. No more trade. The voice of a bridegroom and the bride. Well, there is no more bond. If there is no more bond, there is no more trade. There is no more exchange. And you see, the, uh, the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall not be heard in you anymore. Why? Because for your merchants were the great men of the earth. The merchants of yours, America, were the great men of the earth. Why were they great? Because you are great, America. At the moment, America is great, and whoever trades with America is also great. But when the great America goes, the great merchants will go with it. They will fall as well. Because when America's economy collapses, guess what? The rest of the world's economy will collapse. So all the other great nations will no longer be great because their economy will also come tumbling down to the ground. No more great. Living the American dream. <laughs> Don't know. Why do you want to live a dream? Isn't it much wiser to live a reality than a dream? Someone who lives a dream outside of the Lord is living emptiness, chasing the mirage in the wilderness, in the desert. Stop chasing the mirage, it's not water. So stop running after something that is non-existent. So you need to wake up, come to the light, who is Jesus Christ, and live the truth. What dream? Make America great again. Is that what they say? <laughs> Make America great again. The Lord Jesus is good. 
not great. So when somebody comes and says God is great, no, no, God is good. When you go beyond good, this is good and this is great. The moment you go and say great, you start comparing. So if you say God is great, what are you comparing God with? Is there someone else good and this God is better than the other one? Is it? So are you comparing God with someone else or with something else? No, God is good. Why? Because when it's good, there is no comparison. Why there is no comparison? Because God says, I'm the only one. There is no other one you compare me to because I am the only being that existed internally, not externally. You know, when you, when you hear the word, God is perfect, what does that mean, God is perfect? Maybe someone will say, well, God is perfect because everything in him is perfect. He didn't say much, did he? <laughs> God is perfect, well, he's perfect. The way he talks, the way he does things, the way he walks, everything's perfect about him. No, yes, but no. Why? When we say God is perfect, what does that mean? It means he is the only being that came into existence by himself and no one else. All of us and every other creation came into existence by an external force preceded that being. So we came because of mom and dad. If it wasn't for mom and dad, we wouldn't have come. So now, who created me, mom and dad? By the grace of God, by the will of God, by the help of God. But on earth, who created me and brought me to earth? Mom and dad. So when somebody else created me, I cannot claim the word perfection upon myself. I'm not perfect because I did not create myself by myself. I did not come into existence by myself. Therefore, I will never be able to claim the word perfect for myself. But God can, because he's the only being that came into existence by himself. There is no one else before him, nor after him. Wow. That's why he's perfect. He came into existence by his own power. That's why his beginning has no beginning. So, for your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. Wow. Now, please pay attention, especially the young ones, my beautiful sons and daughters. Those who are teens, 20s, 30s, even 40s. And obviously plus. For your what? Look at this. For, your, for by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. All the nations were deceived. For by your sorcery. What is sorcery here? Like magic. Yeah? Another word for it, magic. What does sorcery mean here in this particular verse? It's not like black magic. You go to one of these clairvoyants or whatever card they use and some of us do it. Ugh. If anybody, if anybody here calls himself or herself a Christian and they go to a sheikh and I don't know where, a clairvoyant, and uh, they put some cards on the table and they told me my future, or they put a cup and they read me what's gonna happen will I get married not will I have a successful business not if you go there I will kill you myself <laughs> red belt in karate reminding everybody I chop chop you even though I'm wearing a long skirt I will still chop chop you <laughs> Now, on a serious note, don't ever, please, I'm begging you, don't ever go anywhere 
to tell you what can happen to you in the future some girls they want to go because they can't wait is this boy for me what's his name James poor James is gone now <laughs> he's destroyed and so many people seek this alternate evil way you have no idea what you've just opened upon yourself which you will not be able to shut you've opened an evil door and allowed Satan to enter your life freely because you went willingly there so you open the door to Satan he will come with his foul spirits you will never find rest in your life until you come back ask the Lord for forgiveness for this particular point I'm talking about you come to the Lord and say let I went and asked this person to write something wrap it up and put it under the pillow or in my pocket and carry it with me if you've got something like that you better bring it to the church we will deal with it don't ever do that don't ever do that don't ever there's only one way to the Lord Jesus when you come repenting ask him for forgiveness and putting everything in his capable hands and saying to the Lord you do in me as you please Lord I don't care if I'm gonna marry James or Rachel as long as you are willing it Lord as long as you are happy with it Lord I'm doing nothing else but your way Lord your way but in this particular verse for by your sorcery all the nations of the world were deceived all the nations of the world were deceived sorcery like magic I'll tell you what sorcery he means you know my beloved son mm, you know, open your ears huh? when you look around and your eye falls on this Rosella called Elizabeth when you look at the face of Elizabeth you look into her eyes it's like magic sorcery <laughs> she her eyes just grabbed you like a magnet drew you to her like a magnet you could not control your feelings your emotions you're a man and all of a sudden you're acting like a little kid oh oh your friends are saying what's wrong with you hello anybody home you're hip you're, you've been <laughs> hypnotized <laughs> oh, did you see her eyes it worked on me like black magic sorcery <laughs> you got attracted to what you saw this is the meaning of for by your sorcery all the nations of the world were deceived and the word deceived is at the end because the beginning you think this is the beauty at the end you will find out my dear son if this girl whom you have fallen in love with is beautiful or not on the first day of honeymoon because she will wake up without makeup So if you want to guarantee what you see is what you get, find a girl without makeup. This is it. That tough luck. That's it. <laughs> For by your sorcery, America, all the nations of the world were deceived. Wow. The world got attracted to America. Like a magnet, they got drawn. From America, Hollywood, so many millions got attracted. It's like sorcery, like magic. Oh, amazing. I went to America, California, and I went, I went to all those big places and these estates. I went to Las Vegas. Oh, sorcery. Look at these mansions. Look at these buildings. Look at these clubs. Look at the colors. 
Woo-hoo. I was blown away. So I got drawn to America. I started traveling to America. I started imitating America as nations. What America does, Australia does. Even Saudi Arabia. Aha. From camels to Rolls Royce, Lamborghini. Man, you should have stayed on the back of that camel. You don't need the Lamborghini, Mr. Sheikh. The Lamborghini destroyed you, brother. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Changed. Even in the little villages somewhere where you cannot see, you don't even know they exist. An old person comes with a mobile. <laughs> and their Wi-Fi connection much stronger than Sydney. The cow is going moo and he's going boo. <laughs> Everyone got attracted. <laughs> Somebody's happy with it. <laughs> I'm going to bring you out here in a minute. <laughs> Everybody got attracted to America because it's like sorcery. When they do black magic on someone, that someone is lost, can't think anymore. Blown away by what they see. Attraction. So attractive. The way America dresses. The way America smells. The way America looks. The way America does things. Everyone wants to imitate America. Ripped jeans. Tattoos. Rap, rap music. Like Middle East, they do rap. <laughs> now it's... What's going on? For by your sorcery, all the nations of the world were deceived by you, America. When we focus on materialism, now please pay attention, I beg you. When we focus on materialism, and when I say materialism, I'm talking about everything that is visible to the naked eye. Therefore, everything that is tangible, everything that is physical, that includes your own body. That's materialistic. So when we focus on materialism, we focus on things that are external. Everything, everything that is external, everything that is visible to the naked eye is only temporal. It will not last my son. It will not last my daughter. You focus on your body and your body only. It will not last. One day the termites will eat that body in the grave. We forgot to focus on the spiritual side of us. The attention is being made only on the materialistic, physical being. We lost track of the spiritual. No wonder we cannot differentiate between our right hand and left and the left. No wonder. No wonder the world is walking in absolute blindness, spiritual blindness, because the only time I and you, you and I, are open, seeing everything clearly with our eyes when Christ is ruling over our life. When Christ... No, no, please. No clapping. No clapping. We, this, is, this is serious. This is serious. So when we get drawn by what the world is offering, and in this particular passage, America is offering the woman... We became focused on it, totally blind, totally blind now. I just want to see who is the next rapper. I just want to see who is the next singer. 
I just want to see who is coming to Australia. You know, I don't care if the ticket is a hundred, two hundred, a thousand dollars. I'll buy it in the black market. I'm going into Sydney Stadium because this guy, this girl came from America. Who gives one penny? They'll come. They will laugh at you. They will tell you things, absolute nonsense, empty vanity of all vanities. They'll make millions out of you and sentence you to darkness. And you say, Wah! people running just to get to the stage. And you see these boys and girls crying, losing it because this guy went, woo, woo. Any brain? Like, what is this? That's foolish, childish. In a more blunt way, it's stupid. Now, seriously, it's stupid. So, what this? What's this? I can do it too. <laughs> like, what is the big deal? I beg you, I beg you. When you come to the Lord, there is no more nonsense. There is no more childish behavior. There is no more deceptive way. There is no more sorcery. The Lord is the light of the world. Everything in the light is clear. Everything in the light is truthful. Everything in the light is genuine. Everything is the, in the light. What you see is what you get. No two ways about it. There is no hypocrisy. There is no acting. There is no deception. Genuineness. With Christ, you get nothing but genuineness. He will come and he will say, I love you, but you're doing things against me. I don't like it. The world will come and say, keep on doing it you're doing great brother and they call you brother <laughs> a lie a lie how many friends called each other bros but when things went wrong where are my bros when i fell when i went into prison where are my so-called bros the one and only the true friends in my life, where are they? Gone. Gone. But Christ never, never leaves. For he is the genuine person you could ever meet, you could ever have in your life. You won't get anyone genuine as Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Impossible. He will say it in your face, I don't like your behavior but I will never let go of you. I will be with you and I will do everything in my power to make sure you come to me. But you need to open the door. I will not force myself in because if I do that, I'll be seen as a thief. I will knock. I can break the door and break your head if I wanted to, but I will not do something against my own nature for I am holy. What is inside of me is outside of me. When I created you on the basis of love, I gave you with love freedom and with freedom choices and with the choices, the will to decide for yourself whether you want to come to me freely or reject me freely. But if you choose freely and willingly to come to me, I will make sure you'll be with me in the end. There is no power in existence that can take you away from the hand of God who was nailed on the cross in the flesh. No one, for I have engraved your names in that wound. I've engraved your names there. No one can wipe your name. My wounds protect you. My wounds preserve you. My wounds guarantee you life as long as you let me work in you. Stop being deceived by the temptations of the world, and in this case, United Nations, America. And we said last week, look at the UN. 
Like, I just wonder, like, is there any country, 193 countries are members of the UN. 193 countries. None of them are men. None of them. They brought down the flags of 193 countries and they put the LGBT flag. Is there any more men? Shame on all of you. You know why? Because the UN is built on Satan anyway. It's built on Satan. And last verse and the end of the chapter. Chapter 18. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints. We need to pay attention how John the Beloved is writing here by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and saints. You see here he didn't say if these prophets and saints their blood was shed he should have said and in her was found the blood of the martyrs because anyone who gets killed for the sake of the Lord Jesus is called a martyr. But John the beloved did not mention the word martyr. Yet their blood was shed. So when somebody's blood is shed for the name of the Lord Jesus, coming, speaking in the name of the Lord, and somebody kills that person, that person is called the martyr. But here, John the Beloved did not mention the word martyr. He said, and in her was found the blood of the prophets and saints. So he's trying to say something else. Now, just something along the way, even though it may not be related to our topic. But speaking of martyrs, just like there are seven sacraments in the Holy Apostolic Universal Church of Christ, so as there are seven divine feasts, like the Feast of Epiphany, Feast of Nativity, Feast of Resurrection. These are divine feasts. There are seven feasts. There are seven sacraments, so as there are seven ranks in the church. What are the ranks? From the number one to the last, from the first to the last, the first, the just. Don't we hear when we speak about our father Joseph, the stepfather, the one who looked after the Holy Mother. What do we refer to our father Joseph? We call him Joseph the just, don't we? See, that's a rank. So, Joseph the just, the first top rank in the ranks is the just. Followed by number two, the righteous. Job of the Old Testament, he is referred to as the righteous Job. So, the second rank is righteous. The third rank, prophets. The fourth rank, apostles. The fifth and last rank, martyrs. The top rank, the just. The last rank, martyrs. That's five. I said seven. So how did it be seven? Where did that come from? Out of the apostles, two ranks came out. Priests and deacons. Five and two, seven. The last rank is the martyr, the church fathers, took the last rank and put it first because martyrs are the ones who gave Christ the ultimate price their blood what is their blood their life is there anything more expensive than life no if you are dead you cannot be just you cannot be righteous you cannot be a prophet you need to live in order to be just righteous prophet apostle so the ultimate thing you could ever offer Christ is your life, which is your blood. That's why the martyrs, which is the last rank, became the first rank in the church. Because they imitate the martyr, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was killed on the cross. He's a martyr. But in here, it says, And in her was found the blood of the prophets and saints. And what else? And of all who were, who were slain on the earth. Now when he's putting it this way. In her was found the blood. 
The blood here talks about suffocation. You know, when, when you kill an animal without slaining that animal and allowing for the blood to be shed, when the blood remains in that animal and you kill that animal, that animal has been suffocated. So the blood of the prophets and the saints were found in her, in America. Suffocation. What has been suffocated here? The prophets. Who are the prophets? Who carry the word of God. So what has been suffocated in America? The word of the Lord. And the saints are the representative of the Lord. So the prophets, those who carry the word of the Lord, the saints who represent the Lord, those who are trying to represent the Lord, those who are trying to speak the word of the Lord, America has suffocated them. Why? Because America is the UN and the UN will let you and allow you to speak about anything and everything except God. The word of the Lord is suffocated. You can go and speak about changing your sex. You can go and say the dog is your God. But to come and speak about the true divine God, they will throw you out. They will never let you. Because UN is built on one thing, so-called human rights. <laughs> the biggest lie ever. Let me tell you this, and I'll finish it off on this. And that's the last verse. It's going to take me another 10 hours, okay? <laughs> if anyone, anyone comes and says, we need to be standing for our freedom, our freedom. Hmm? Can you please define your freedom? To see whether I'm willing to fight for this freedom or not. You see, when you want to go and fight for something, you need to know what you're fighting for. You see what happened with that pandemic thing in 2020 was a lie, that pandemic. You see, so many people were fighting for human rights, freedom. The problem, <laughs> the problem is, the freedom which you were fighting for was the very freedom that got you into all this mess in the first place. See, because you chased your freedom outside of the Lord, that's why you were enslaved. If we had chased the freedom which God gives us, no one can enslave us. No one, because God is the protector. I never put a mask on. And when I celebrated the Holy Mass, I don't give one penny. They can come and what? Put a mask on my mouth in the holy altar. I'll shred them. I will step on their Satan. You don't shut my mouth, you little, little mouse, Satan. Because the only one who can shut my mouth is the one who gave me this mouth in the first place. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So you and your Satan can go to hell. Please, the UN, which is run by America, all it talks about human rights. And I'll leave you with it. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. The Western world, the Western world has succeeded has succeeded tremendously in giving value to everything, but has failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. The Western world, being America, Canada, Europe, Australia, the Western world, has succeeded tremendously in giving value to everything, but has failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. The problem is, until we find out what the purpose of the thing is, 
we will never be able to give it value. What is, to cut it short, what is the value of a human being? Human rights. What is the purpose of the human being? The right to be a human, not human rights. What is the value of a human being? Human rights. What is the purpose of the human being? The right to be a human. We focused on human rights, human rights value, and we totally ignored the purpose of the human, which is the right to be a human. What is the right to be a human? Let's talk about this. If we can't find an answer to what is the right to being a human, we can never find the value to this human. And if we come ignoring the purpose, focusing on the value, we will do one thing to that human. We will abuse that human. And this is exactly what is happening in the 21st century. The human being is being abused because the focus is on the value, ignoring the purpose. What is the right to be a human? To find the answer to this, we need to go back to our origin. What is our origin? In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. He is our purpose of existence. God, whom we are denying as the UN America. Denying. It's all about human rights. Where is God? No, you can't talk about God. If America focused on the Lord Jesus and enough of this nonsense, deceptive ways of United Nations, there is no such thing as United Nations. None of the nations are united because everybody hates everybody. Why? Because that unity is built on Satan. <laughs> Where are they going to get true love from? Satan? <laughs> are you kidding me? Out of Satan comes hatred, evilness, deception, murder. Murder. What did the Lord Jesus say about Satan? He said he is the father of all lies and he is the killer of mankind from the very beginning. What did Satan do in the Garden of Eden killed Adam and Eve and after that what did he do got Cain to kill his brother Abel he's the killer UN is built on Satan the liar of all and the killer of all and they're talking about human rights that's why everybody is enslaved the pandemic and so many other things nonsense global warming in fact the temperature is cooling is not warming yeah it's a laughable matter absolutely there are studies proving that temperature is cooling is not warming and what a nonsense global warming and the church is involved in supporting such nonsense and you as a church leader what is your job talking about talk about the holy bible Talk about the Lord. What's it to you, global warming? Leave it to Satan. Let him go and warm his, himself up because he lives in hell anyway. It's kind of warm. <laughs> what global warming? He's got plenty of warm, warm in there. <laughs> Poor thing, we need to cool him down a bit. <laughs> I'll take him to Antarctica. <laughs> um, or maybe to Klaus Schwab. Him and, uh, him and Davos. Mm. The Lord will pluck Davos from its roots. And whoever goes there, whoever goes there, they'll be plucked from their roots. Because they're playing with fire. Evil worshippers. Evil doers, Satan worshippers. Mm. World Economic Forum, Heil Hitler. Man, you know what? When you look at what is happening in the world, you need to know it's absolute evilness. Can the medical field lie to you? Yes, because it's controlled by the biggest mafia, the big pharma. Of course they will lie to you. Can the entertainment 
lie to you because it's controlled by Illuminati, Satan worshippers. Can the church sometimes lie to you? Yes, because it's infiltrated. It's the end of times. Today you speak to some Christians, and I'll make an emphasis on the word some. Christians. The moment you start talking about the Lord, they'll say, this is too much. What are you on about? Talk about the Lord, but not too much. Why are you talking about the Lord? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Am I in the wrong place? <laughs> Who do you want me to talk to about? About your big nose? Or your big ears? Well, if you've got big ears, then listen. Open them up. Don't talk about the Lord. It's too much. You're taking too long. Wow. Wow. Look how Satan talks. Even through Christians. So-called Christians. If we don't talk about the Lord, then who else and what else is left? If we don't get preoccupied with the Lord, then what is our purpose here on earth? Then why are we calling ourselves Christians? Might as well forget it, deny, and be a man and say, I'm no longer a Christian, I'm an atheist or whatever. Or I worship something or whatever. The leaf of the tree fell, this is my God. Or the wind blew and I said, oh, what a feeling, Toyota. <laughs> Worship something else. You need to be true to yourself. True. My son, why do you want to go to the club? Why do you want to go clubbing? Why do you want to go out with girls, boys and girls, having fun somewhere in the city? The wrong fun. Why? My daughter. You need to look after yourself. You need to look after your health, both physical and spiritual. You have been purchased, my son and my daughter, by the ultimate price, the blood of the Lamb of God. You are not cheap. You descend from the royal family. God is your daddy, and your daddy is the king of all kings. You are a king and a queen descending from the royal family. You're not cheap. You are the most expensive, precious being ever to exist in this universe. You're not cheap to go and sell yourself so cheaply. Step on Satan. You don't belong in the dark alley, you belong in the light. You don't belong in the club, you belong in the church. You don't belong to Satan, you belong to Christ the King. You are the Son of God, by, made by the Son of God, the only Son of God. He, he, adapt, he adopted us through baptism, one of the seven sacraments of the church. He ad, ad, adapted us to being children of God through the holy sacrament of baptism. You don't belong nowhere else except Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Where are you going, my son? Where are you going, my beloved daughter? Enough. Cover yourself. Don't go out naked. Look at the bishop. <laughs> Don't I look cute? Yes. I'm not ashamed to go out with this outfit. Let everybody look at me and laugh and ridicule me. This is my honor. I'm not going to come to the church dressed up in this way and if I go out somewhere, I put on a suit. No, no. This is my uniform. This is my identity. Even if I go to the city, I'll go like this. Now you like it, you don't, beside the point. You don't tell me how to live for the Lord, I'll tell you how to live for the Lord. 
My children, I beg you, I beg you, come to the Lord. Stop hurting him. Stop upsetting him. Stop breaking his heart. Next time somebody comes singing for this world, let him sing for himself or herself. Let that stadium be empty. Who cares? I know a good, I got it. What happened to a good, I'm bad, you're bad? Does anybody use these kind of words? I'm bad, you're bad. Michael Jackson, you started as a young teenager in the church choir for God's sake what happened look at Hollywood destroyed you my dear I pray the Lord has mer mercy on you but look how you began look how you ended you started singing and praising the Lord in the end you worked for Satan and look what Satan has done to you you went and changed your color your face you changed everything God made you to be you lost God and when you lose God you've lost everything and the ultimate is your spirit yourself people would see him cry and yell and if I had seen I wish I had seen him I would have sat with him with love and respect and I would have said, listen, you mean nothing to me the way you are. But the day you come back to the Lord, then I will honor you. Because you don't forget your background and your roots. You're a Christian, remain a Christian. But you see the sorcery of this woman? Attracted everyone. You see, it drew the whole nations to her externally. And internally she killed every nation I got attracted to this person I fell in love with this person and this person ended up destroying me externally I was attracted internally I was destroyed because don't fall for the external looks don't fall for the temptations of the world it looks wonderful I went to the city all the colors of the lights and the colors who were walking in the streets of the city so attractive it was like black magic done on me. I went blank, blown away by this beauty. You went, you got drawn to that beauty externally. Internally, it was nothing but poison, my child, poison. I ended up taking drugs. I ended up being abused physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. I got abused. The mistake was I got attracted externally. I was poisoned internally by that woman. Come to the church. He will give you the antidote to that poison, the blood of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Is my oxygen. I live because of him. I talk, walk, I do things because of him. But remember, my children, this life on earth is like a dream. You, my youngsters, you may not fully comprehend what I'm saying, but when you get to my age, you will remember. And you will understand this life on earth is like a dream don't live thinking you will remain here forever the dream will come to an end somebody came and tapped me on the shoulder and woke me up and I thought I was living reality and when I woke up it was nothing but a dream and what is a dream a lie a story told on a fake foundation 
I planned for things. I wanted things. I chased after things. And when the spirit left the body, it was the time when I woke up from the dream. And every plan, everything I thought of to do was absolutely nothing but a lie. It's a dream. But one thing never changes. The truth. His name is Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. I am the Lord of the world, 8, 12. <sighs> Come to the one that you will live in him forever. He is never a dream. He is the truth. Amen. Amen. Well, chapter 18 was kind of miserable. It was all about the wrath and being striked and this and that. Chapter 19, we're going to look at the brighter side. Now, and this is our life on earth. Every time we go through certain miseries, remember, there will be joyous times coming. It will never remain miserable because there will be a happy moment coming. It will never remain happy because there will come a trial moment as well. You are living on earth. Sometimes I am in the light. Sometimes I am in the dark. Sometimes I'm happy. Sometimes I'm not. I'm laughing. I'm crying. I'm healthy. I'm sick. I'm strong. I'm weak. But remember, regardless what kind of a situation you're in and what kind of a condition you are in, remember the one who created you, the one who made you, the one who died for you and rose from the dead for you. He is the never changing God. We all change except him. And thank you, Lord, for not changing ever. Because when you said, I love you, that love will always be the case. Because you never change. And when you said, I am with you all the days of your life and until the end of all ages, you will never change. And when you said, I died and purchased you with my blood, you will never change. Come to the one that never changes. Amen. I love you. But remember, Jesus loves you the most. Let's listen to another hymn. And uh, we have some more choir members. Yeah? <coughs> Wonderful. Amen. Very good. America had relied on the Lord Jesus and never created the United Nations, they would have always been in control. But this is what happens when you rely on yourself and deny the protection and the existence of God. Everyone at the end will laugh at that nation when it falls. We need the Lord, my beloveds. Whether we are individuals or as a nation, as a government, we need the Lord Jesus. This is the truth. Jesus Christ has got nothing to do with Christians. Just because you're a Christian, that doesn't mean you know Christ. The Lord wants your heart. Not some sort of an identity card saying, I'm a Christian. Not your parents come and say you were baptized when you were a little baby but as you grow older you walked away from the Lord baptism is foundational but the foundation is not the whole house after the foundation we need to start building the house on this foundation we need the Lord we need to build ourselves in the Lord build a relationship with the Lord get to know him ask him. say Lord I want to know you I really want to know you. Talk to him. Beg him. Say, I'm a sinner. Because we all are. And I'm the greatest of all. Myself. Confess, my beloved son and daughter. Confess. We are all sinners. And I'm the greatest of all. I'm the number one. I say it with a loud voice. I'm the greatest sinners of all. Lord, have mercy on me. 
have mercy. I beg you, change me. Take me all to you and give me all of you. I want to be you, Lord. I want to dissolve in you. No longer I exist, but you in me, my Lord. Very well. Um, just a couple of announcements very quickly. Um, we are asking, um, we thought of this, this person didn't ask for it, but we thought of this as a church, as, a, as one family. Um, this accident happened to this family and I really broke my heart. And we're asking for whatever donations, if you can, give um, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'd like to surprise that person by getting them another car because the car was a write-off and uh, they are doing it tough as it is. Um, and they had a big accident, thank God. Um, there was children in the car, but everybody came out in one piece. Uh, the, uh, the car, they don't have full insurance. They couldn't afford to have full insurance. So the car is gone. And we're trying to collect whatever, whatever money comes uh, to surprise them and, and get him another car. So if you'd like to donate, you know, um, please uh, see one of the committee members uh, for this particular donation. Just um, I'm asking also the committees uh, to put as a reference, if you're doing it by, you know, online thing, just put as a reference car, so we know it's going for a car, okay? Just put C-A-R, car. Um, yep. The other one is um, our youth ministry. Um, this is for the ages of between 18 and 40. If you, haven't, if you haven't joined our youth ministry and you'd like to join, please do so. If you are 18, between 18 and 40, this is our youth ministry. Please to put your name down. The next meeting for this month will be on Saturday, the 24th of Feb. It's at 12 noon. Uh, and this is going to be the last Saturday for this month. It's the Saturday, 24th of February at 12 noon. Coming Mar uh, March, it will revert, go back to Wednesdays instead of Saturdays. And the meeting will be on the 27th of March. Currently, we meet once a month. It's going to be on the 27th of March. A Wednesday at, set, at 6 p.m. here at the church. 27th of March, that's Wednesday, um, at 6 p.m. here at the church. But for this Saturday, for this month, it's Saturday the 24th of Feb at midday. Um, with the youth ministry, we have a lot of, um, you know, projects that we wish to do in the very near future. We are asking our youth to come and do something for the Lord Jesus. Let's come together and do something that will put a smile on the Lord Jesus' face. So if you're 18, between 18 and 40, uh, this is our youth ministry. Um, please enroll, put your name down and join us because there will be um, spiritual uh, projects, activities in the very near future. I believe it will be very beneficial for all of us. Uh, Divine Heart Sunday School parents with children from the ages of 5 to 16. Uh, Divine Heart Sunday School is coming back officially uh, for this year on this Sunday, the 11th of Feb. This coming Sunday, the 11th Feb, uh, our Divine Heart Sunday School is resuming. Please enroll your children from the ages of 5 to 16 in our Divine Heart Sunday School. It goes hand in hand with the Holy Mass service. We have two Holy Mass services on Sundays, one in the morning, 9 a.m., which is in Assyrian. The other one is at 6 p.m. in English. We have both Divine Heart Sunday Schools for both liturgies. 17. 17. Oh, I'm sure we can do something. Are yeah. you talking about the Divine Heart Sunday School or the youth ministry? Youth ministry. Yeah, if you're 17, I'm pretty close. Uh, look, I'm sure we can squeeze, you know, something there. Yes, yeah, no problem, no problem. So, you know, sometimes like a 17-year-old can be extremely mature. So yes, no problems. And if you'd like to learn the Lord's language, Aramaic or Syriac, um, the classes are open to enroll in, and it will commence on Thursday the 15th of Feb. That's the commencement date, Thursday 15th of Feb at 7 p.m. And um, yeah, it'll be once a week, every Thursday at 7 p.m., starting 15th of Feb. Put your name down if you'd like to learn 
Shlama Amchon. Aikanna Itaikon. This is the Eastern dialect. The Western dialect, different accent. It's like Aussie English and Brit British English. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just the accent different, otherwise, it's the same language. Uh, Syriac, uh, whether Eastern or Western dialect, same language. The last thing is I'd like to put a, a slideshow very quickly about the, um, the sponsorship that we opened up for children and families abroad. Um, so Jesus, the Good Samaritan Aid Society 2023 update. Um, I'm not sure, can we turn just these lights off so we can have a, a more clearer uh, screen? Just the lights in the cornices, just turn them off quickly. Don't turn the whole lights. Um, let's hope for the best. Yep. Yeah, just the cornices. Yep, that's better. That's better. Okay, so um, just a small update. I maybe you can't read it, but those maybe at home can see it clearer, more clear. Um, so, yes, um, the, um, the sponsorship is, is going well. We will always, every now and then, remind you of it. If you'd like to join, if you haven't heard about it, please um, do join in this uh, beautiful cause. We are reaching out to children and families abroad, mainly. There, there's also help internally in Australia, but it's mainly focused on families and children truly struggling overseas. Uh, we are looking after over 300 children uh, in, in, diff in ten, about, about 10 different countries and about a thousand families in those you know, 10 different countries. We send money, we send also food for the families and the children. Uh, so we need your help. We are hoping and praying for the Lord to bless this more and more, where we can expand and come and start providing shelter for these uh, little kids who are left orphans. Maybe we build them an orphanage. We are we're looking at a property to purchase in a in a country where I will not name as yet. Actually, I will. It was Lebanon. So there was a piece of land we were going to purchase in Lebanon. Look, we do not differentiate because remember this, Christ is the one who unites us all. Don't ever say, um, I'm a Christian Lebanese and you're a Christian Iraqi and you're a Christian from Syria and uh, you are, we're different. No, we're not. Just because I was born in Syria, that's my address. Just because I was born in Iraq, that's my address. Just like I was born in Australia, uh, that's my address. You should be proud of that identity. You should never deny that identity. Wherever you were born, be proud of that. But be more so proud that you're a Christian, belonging to Christ, the King. So, I'm originally from Iraq, but I was excited to get the land in Lebanon. What's the difference between Iraq and Lebanon? Same. What's the difference between a child in Iraq and in Lebanon and Syria and Africa and in, in, in uh, Thailand in Philippines, wherever? What's the difference? A child is a child. This child is the child of God. God created this child. God purchased this child with his own blood. No difference. So I'm really happy. And Lebanon, I love Lebanon. It's gorgeous. Habib Albi. My love and regards to the people of Lebanon. I love you. And to everyone, I love you all. So yeah, um, we've, uh, we've sent a report, uh, an updated report to all the sponsors uh, in Australia and abroad. And I pray that you've received that report. If you haven't, please do email us and tell us that you haven't received the, uh, that report for whatever reason and we will uh, endeavor to send it as soon as possible to you. In that report, we've, uh, we've included everything in there. Say how many children we've helped, how many families, uh, how much money has been, uh, you know, all the money, the support that has been coming, it's been all going there. Um, along the way, there has been emergencies. We've been receiving four calls of emergency cases. Uh, we've just helped a, a little kid a child that needed an urgent operation and whatever it cost doesn't matter this is a precious life so wherever we can help we will never hesitate by the grace of the Lord and working through you my beloveds the more you sponsor 
the more you contribute, the more we can help, the more we can build, the more we can do. So please, it is the Good Samaritan Aid Society, short for G Zaz. G for George, S for Sam, A for Alpha, S for Sam dot org dot AU. Jesus dot org dot AU. Please donate, uh, share this link with everyone you know. Encourage everyone, even if it's a dollar a month. Whatever the amount is, as long as it comes from the heart and goes to the heart. So um, the, um, the program is going really well. But obviously, there's always room to grow more and to improve more and to do more. And we want to go to the next level where we can provide shelter overseas for these little children and families that are truly, 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 literally living of the gutter. I can assure you, in certain countries, people look for food in the rubbish bins. Believe you me. In the rubbish bins. They look for food. So, um, whatever you can help. Jesus, G-S-A-S dot org dot A-U. Share this link. Share this website with everyone you know. And encourage everyone to partake in this great mission and this great program. Other than that, let us stand for the finale prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. The peace of Christ be with you always, my beloved. See you next week.